Hello and welcome to our guide for Paragons of the Klaxi, the 13th boss encounter in the Siege of Orgrimmar. This is a council fight during which you will have to defeat 9 bosses. At the start of the fight, 3 bosses will activate and from then on, each time a boss is killed, a new boss will enter the fight. Each time a boss is killed, the other active bosses are healed to full health and they gain a permanent damage bonus. The order in which the bosses activate is randomly decided at the start of each lockout. Each boss uses a few abilities against your raid. Also, when a boss dies, a raid member can interact with their corpse and gain a buff until the end of the fight. Each raid member can only interact with one paragon, each paragon can only be interacted with once, and most buffs are role-specific. These buffs are nice bonuses, but using them efficiently is not required to defeat the encounter. As such, we're going to talk about the buffs at the very end of this guide. There is no general strategy for the fight that can be determined ahead of time, since the order in which the bosses activate, and therefore the order in which you fight them, changes every lockout. We will simply tell you the best way to handle boss abilities on their own, and it is up to you to piece this information together in practice. Now we're going to talk about the bosses. Kill Rook the Wind Reaver stacks a debuff called Exposed Veins on his current tank, which causes the attacks of Xaril the Poisoned Mind, another boss, to deal more damage to that player. Kill Rook also regularly uses Gouge to incapacitate his tank and then follows this up by dealing very high damage to them. Finally, Kill Rook sometimes casts Death from above, flying up into the air and landing at the location of a random raid member, dealing damage in a 5 yard area. Exposed veins presents no real concerns, and it just means that Kill Rook's tank should not also tank Saril. Death from above must be avoided, the landing location is indicated a few seconds in advance. Gouge and the resulting damage burst on the tank must simply be survived through. Xaril the Poisoned Mind stacks a debuff called Tenderizing Strikes on his current tank, which causes the attacks of Kill Rook the Wind Reaver to deal more damage to that player. Caustic Blood is another stacking tank debuff that causes the tank to explode at 10 stacks, dealing massive raid-wide damage. If the tank is under the effects of an active mitigation cooldown when Caustic Blood is cast, it has a cast time, then it is not applied. Having tanks always time their active mitigation so that no stacks are applied is the ideal way to handle this ability, since the damage from the explosion is very high. Alternatively, if a stack does get through, the tank should just focus on avoiding future applications so that the debuff can expire before it reaches 10 stacks. Saril also casts an ability called Toxic Injection when he activates. He assigns a color, either red, blue or yellow, to each raid member and then at regular intervals essentially detonates all players that have a particular color. The red color players deal damage in a 10 yard area around them. The blue color players deal massive damage split between a number of players in an area, at most 2 in 10 man and 3 in 25 man, and the yellow color players drop void zones that deal damage to players standing in them. Simply spread out for red, stack on the affected players for blue, and avoid the void zones for yellow. Kaztik the Manipulator summons 4 hungry Kunchongs when he becomes active. Whenever a Kunchong is killed, another one respawns in its place. These adds are normally inert and invulnerable. At certain moments, though, Kaztik will select a random raid member and mesmerize them, essentially causing these players to lose control of their characters and walk slowly towards one of the hungry Kunchongs. In turn, that Kunchong will become vulnerable and it will instantly kill the mesmerized player if they reach the Kunchong. The mesmerize effect is broken if the Kunchong takes 30% of its maximum health in damage. If the Kunchong gets to kill a player, it turns into a mature Kunchong, which moves around attacking players and which has an extremely damaging frontal cone attack. Basically, your raid just needs to switch DPS to whichever hungry Kunchong the mesmerized player moves towards. Kaztik also casts Sonic Projection, dealing damage to a random raid member as well as to any other raid members caught in the path of the boss and the initial target. Avoid damage from this by making sure you are not positioned in a line relative to the boss. Corvin the Prime casts Encase in Amber, a protective spell on any allied boss that is below 50% health, including on himself, which encases them in Amber and if the Amber is not killed within 10 seconds, heals that boss to full health. Basically, you just need to switch to the Amber and kill it right away, but there is something else you can do here which we'll talk about later on when we talk about general strategy. 
In addition to Encase in Amber, Corvin also uses an ability called Shield Bash that stuns his tank, which he immediately follows up with Vicious Assault, dealing very high damage to all targets in front of him. Just face Corvin away from the raid and make sure tanks and healers are prepared for this very high damage. Yokuk the Lucid regularly casts Diminish on random raid members, dealing 34% of their current health and damage and instantly killing them if they are below 25% of their maximum health. This just means that healers have to pay special attention not to allow any raid members to be below 25% health. Yokuk assigns each player in the raid a shape, a color, and a number, and then later casts Insane Calculation Fiery Edge, which links all players who share one of these attributes with fiery beams. The beams deal damage to the linked players as well as to anyone else who comes in contact with the beams, and their damage is lower the farther the linked players are from one another. The beams disappear on their own after 10 seconds. The ability may look quite complex, but in practice you just need to make sure that the players who are linked move away from each other right away and that no one comes in contact with the beams. Karaz the Locust has two abilities. He uses Flash to charge random players around the room, affecting all players in his path with Whirling, a debuff that causes them to spin in place for a few seconds, suffering damage and dealing damage to any allies in a nearby area. Just spread out for this effect, but don't worry too much about avoiding Karaz since he is very fast and you won't manage most of the time. His other ability is Hurl Amber. He jumps up on top of a platform located above the raid where he cannot be attacked, and then he throws pieces of amber down at the raid from there, leaving void zones where they land. Just avoid these void zones. Skier the Bloodseeker stacks a debuff called Hewn on his current tank, which causes the attacks of Rikal the Dissector, another one of the bosses, to deal more damage to that player. He also regularly summons several adds called Bloods that move to active bosses and heal them when they reach them, based on the adds remaining health. The Hewn debuff is not an issue, only meaning that Skier's tank should not tank Rikal, and the Bloods need to be killed as soon as they spawn. They can be slowed and stunned, and all DPS players should switch to them. If Skier is among the first three bosses to activate, you could use Heroism or Bloodlust to quickly burn him down before any Bloods have a chance to reach him and heal him, but this is quite situational and depends on your raid's DPS. Recall that the Sector stacks a debuff called Genetic Alteration on his current tank, which causes the attacks of Skier to deal more damage to that player. Again, this buff is not an issue. Rikal also uses another stacking tank debuff called Injection, which deals nature damage per second for each stack and when it expires it causes several amber parasites to spawn. These parasites fixate on random raid members and deal damage to them and they heal to full health every 10 seconds. If the tank is under the effects of an active mitigation cooldown when Injection is cast, it has a cast time, then it is not applied. Having tanks always time their active mitigation so that no stacks are applied is the ideal way to handle this ability, since the Amber Parasites are very problematic. Alternatively, if a stack does get through, that tank should just continue to take the other stacks so that the debuff never expires, since it wears off harmlessly when Rikal is killed. Rikal also regularly turns a random raid member into an Amber Scorpion for 30 seconds. This player is essentially placed inside a vehicle where they take damage every second and have access to a limited set of abilities to use against the boss. The abilities are very basic and we won't go into them here. Players can just spam them. Hisek the Swarm Keeper casts two abilities. Multi-Shot deals moderate physical damage to random raid members and it's just something you need to survive. Aim is a more complex ability. Hisek will target a random raid member, stun them for 5 seconds, after which time he will deal damage to that player with a beam of energy. The damage done by the beam is split between all players who come in contact with it, that is to say, who are between the player and Hisek, but these players also deal damage in a 5 yard radius around them. Basically, you want several players to intercept the beam 5 yards apart in order to reduce its damage. If a targeted raid member is too close to Hisek when aim is cast, they are knocked back. The only other things we can mention about general strategy are that you should not bother with cleaving or multi-dotting the bosses since as soon as one dies, the others are healed to full. 
The exception to this is if Corvin is alive, in which case you may want to try bringing both Corvin and another boss close to 50% health and then bringing the other boss to 50% health before Corvin. This will cause Corvin to encase the other boss in Amber and you can then focus on quickly killing Corvin. This technique is especially useful if you are finding it difficult to kill the Amber in the 10 second window. Now let's quickly look at the buffs you can get from the corpses of the Paragons. We're going to sort them by their role specific qualities. There is one tank buff gained from Corvin's corpse. It is called Master of Amber and it grants the tank an extra ability that allows them to encase a targeted raid member in Amber, making them immune to damage for 5 seconds. Beware that if used on a tank, it causes any mobs attacking that player to switch target. There are two healer buffs. One is obtained from Eokuk's corpse and it is called Ingenious. It grants the healer an extra ability that allows them to heal a targeted raid member. The heal is then copied over to all players who share race or class with that player. The other healer buff is obtained from Xaril's corpse and it is called Vast Apothecarial Knowledge. The healer gains an extra ability called Volatile Poultice, which lasts 10 seconds and causes all heals to store the healing on the targets, in addition to actually healing them. This causes the targets to be healed for the stored amount when they take damage. There are 4 DPS buffs. The buff gained from Karo's corpse is called Strong Legs. It allows the DPS players to leap up to the same platform that Karo's regularly leaps up to and to then throw Amber down at the raid. This deals damage to any enemies in a 15 yard radius and also breaks any Amber blocks caused by Corvins in case in Amber. The buff gained from Skier's corpse is called Bloodthirsty. It gives the DPS players attacks a chance to summon blood orbs around the room. Raid members who walk over blood orbs have 10% of their maximum health restored. The buff gained from Kill Rook's corpse is called Reeve. It allows the DPS player to leap 10 yards in front of them, dealing damage in a 10 yard area when they land. The buff gained from his sex corpse is called Compound Eye. It grants the DPS player an extra ability that shoots at a targeted enemy, dealing damage to them and causing them to take 15% increased damage for 10 seconds. The damage done by Compound Eye is higher the farther away the player is from the target. The final two buffs are not role specific. Players can obtain Mad Scientist from Rikal's corpse. This grants the player an extra ability with a 2 minute cooldown that turns them into an Amber Scorpion, identical to the one that Rikal turns players into while he is active. Players can obtain Master of Puppets from Kaztik's corpse. This grants the player the ability to summon a Kunchong to fight by their side for 40 seconds. As we said, these buffs can be useful and you should try to make use of them as much as possible, but using them is not needed to defeat the boss. For a more detailed and constantly updated written version of this guide, go to the link in the description. Thank you for watching.